Thank you for watching East County SELPA's new Special Education Director video series. This series is part of a larger project funded by the California Department of Education under the IEP Technical Support and Assistance Grant. These videos supplement the other resources for new special education directors that can be found on our website, highqualityieps.net. New special education directors come to this position with varied experiences. Some have been within the field of special education for many years, and some are brand new to special education. This video series is targeted to first and second year special education directors to provide perspectives related to special education of various departments within a district. The goal is to cultivate a deeper understanding of the special education director as they lead their department and collaborate with other district departments. For additional questions, special education directors are encouraged to collaborate with other leaders within their district and their special education local plan area director. Hello, new directors of special education. My name is Dr. Tim Glover, and I'm a retired superintendent. And today I want to share some thoughts about how new directors of special education can have a meaningful and strong relationship with the following roles. Superintendent, Assistant Superintendent of Business, sometimes called Chief Financial Officer, Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources, Assistant Superintendent of Educational Services, and a few other important connections. For superintendents, the number one thing about superintendents is communication. And most importantly, there should be no surprises when it comes to communication. Make sure you always let them know exactly what's going on, whether it's good or bad. What's important for superintendents is to provide both consumable and usable information, because they may need to use that information with the school board. Depending on the district size, I suggest that you meet regularly with your superintendent or the designee. That may be monthly or quarterly. Something important for your superintendent and for you is that you need to know your documents. When it comes to the big picture documents, you need to know your district's vision, the student demographics, kind of signed agreements that your district has, also their board policies. But for you as the director of special education, you need to know your documents. That means your local plan, your CAC guidelines, any audits or studies or reports that have been done for your particular department. And as always, you need to know anything that comes from CDE or OSEP. Another thing I suggest for superintendents is that you always check in with your superintendent both prior and after any regional meetings like SELPA meetings. It can be as simple as sending them a note right before the meeting saying, I'm going to a meeting on Tuesday, I'll keep you in the loop. When it comes to working on issues, be consistent in sharing information with that upper level cabinet of superintendent and assistant superintendents because they will all get together and compare notes. And if the notes don't match, they're going to wonder about the communication you're sharing with them. And always share some work efforts in your program and curriculum with them when you're meeting with your superintendent and not just talk about the IEP and due process concerns. Specifically, I suggest that you always share a student or program success, success each time you meet with the superintendent. They want to share your story and your news, so leave them with something easy to use. Now, when it comes to assistant superintendent of business, there are a number of items that ring true for them. Remember, they're a department that focuses on numbers, so bring them with you. I suggest you build a regular and positive relationship with the department and the leader, because it's this department that has the clearest and biggest picture of the district's financial resources, and special education takes resources. I always suggest that you communicate all your contracts that your department has with the business services offices. Make sure you remember your non-public school contracts, your vendor contracts, your service providers. They need to know all of that. Another important area you need to be prepared to talk to your assistant superintendent of business about is position control. It is real and bring the numbers and the rationale for your requests. I suggest as a director you know the total cost for each employee in your department I mean salary, benefits, any stipends or other funding. Make sure you know the total cost. And your plans for staffing positions and services that are needed are easier to fund when this division, financial services, understands your needs, and then they can help you with it. And the last thing I would share with you regarding financial services and that is that you as the director of special ed, you need to know your funding at an expert level. 
You need to know all the sources, and more importantly, you need to know your maintenance of effort. Because when you're an expert on your funding, your, your assistant superintendent of business services trusts you at a higher level. Now for the assistant superintendent of human resources. Remember, these are the people and relationships uh, folks, and that's what drives their division in that. So make sure you know your people. And like with assistant superintendent, assistant superintendent of business services, you need to know position control and make sure you bring real numbers and rationale for requests for the HR people. Also for your human resources assistant superintendent, start early with this person if you're going to be doing any specialty recruiting like speech language pathologists, or if you have bilingual openings you need to fill, deaf hard of hearing program or preschool programs, whatever it is, start early on those special recruitings by informing this division. Now if there are special education needs, you need to know that those could lead to other needs that the human resources department would know about. It's very common that a special ed director will say, hey, I've got 40 new students coming. And the human resource person immediately thinks, oh my goodness, that means we need another bus driver, maybe another bus aide. So be prepared to understand that they're listening globally to all of your needs. I also suggest that for human resources, you learn the process and paperwork needed for all the hires that you make. Neat and clean paperwork helps them do your job for you. And make sure you know the various special ed related components of the union contracts associated with your special ed employees. Talking about the varying staffing groups like your classified, certificated, and management employees. And also remember to think about if there's any special like stipends inside any of those contracted negotiations. And for the Assistant Superintendent of Educational Services, students and learning drive this division so speak that language to them when you're working with your assistant superintendent of educational services. Data drives many actions here in this particular division. So make sure you know your data, like your APR targets, and know their data, which means what are they focusing on with their CASP or their LCAP. What I suggest to you as a new director of special education is you want to be a resource for educational services. Know your data so when they ask for it, you're ready. And you want to be, a, again, a resource, not just a requester of help from that particular division. I do suggest when it comes to educational services that you be actively engaged in any curriculum efforts so that students with disabilities are planned for it on the front end of any curriculum or program development. Make sure you take time to learn the language of educational services and the terms they use across general ed, and then share your terms, like people first language and so forth. When it comes to educational services also, always ask if you can be part of any presentation they're doing for professional development, and then ask them to come back to you and present to your staff also. Know and work closely with student services inside this division, because even students with disabilities get suspended or even sometimes expelled, and you want to be a partner with this team because there are responsibilities and rights involved. Some other important con connections I think that really be of, of benefit to you as a new director. One of the most obvious ones is transportation. And I suggest you meet face to face with the dispatchers. You want to know the people who know where your kids are on the bus, where the bus is going, and if the bus has got back. It's really important to know that. And also make sure you take time to always thank the drivers and aides involved. Another department would be food services. This is a very unique department that blends a bunch of bulk work as far as feeding the masses, but also could be intimately involved in feeding a student with disabilities. Another department would be the technology department. That's your IEP connectivity department. So you want to make sure that you're a good tech collaborator with that department. Another department I suggest you focus on and reach out to is your district facilities department. And I say that because Whenever you're building a new facility as a district superintendent, you want to make sure everything's planned for and in the blueprints. And it is much harder to add a special education bathroom, changing facility, or cooking facilities after a $70 million school has been built. So you want to be on the front end of anything with district facilities. Now, an under the radar department that I suggest you also focus on and reach out to is the purchase, purchasing department. I know every special education per, uh, purchase feels like a unique one, but that may not be the case. And you need to know that there are rules and regulations and more importantly, laws associated with purchasing. And you don't want to be on the wrong side of those. 
a specific group I suggest you really reach out to are your, your school principals. They really are your frontline people and they see your staff on a daily basis because you just can't be at every school all the time. So develop a really strong relationship with the school principals. And while I'm thinking about it, make sure you pause and don't forget to take time to celebrate with your own special education department team and that focus on them periodically because remember, it's you and them that keep education special. So I have a few closing thoughts, if you don't mind. For those of you in the multi-district SELPAs, meet and know your SELPA director and your SELPA staff. They are a great resource and a partner of great value. I also suggest you develop a positive relationship with your CDE contacts. You will need them. I can assure you that the more you know about your CDE contacts, insight and wisdom and perspective on issues, the more you'll be able to work together with CD, CDE rather than just receive those letters that tell you what you must do. And then finally, I would suggest that you use those resources around you, like these new director documents that are being prepared for this academy, any professional development related to program, legal, or finance, finance aspects of your work, encourage your bosses to let you go to that. And then my last comment would be, know the four C's. The first C is communication. Communication cures. It helps people know and understand what is going on. The second C is compliance. In our business in special education, compliance is real, and you want to be on the compliance side of that. The third C is connections, and I can assure you that connections built in a positive way always pay dividends. And then the final, or the fourth C, is compassion. And you need to know compassion is a choice that you make. And please know that if you give some, it will always come back to you, whether it's from staff, students, or sometimes most importantly, from parents. Thank you for the opportunity to share these thoughts with you, and I wish you all the very best of luck.